All right. So everybody, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm sure everybody's really busy just trying to keep everything working. So we're going to be going over a couple of things today with regards to solutions for remote collaboration. Hopefully make everything a little bit easier for everybody and make some things a little bit clearer for everybody too. <coughs> so little setup. If you're not familiar with Microdesk, we are an AECO technology consulting firm. We've been around since 94. Uh, we are all over the world at this point. So our, our team has been very, very, uh, uh, we have a lot of experience working remotely from our office, our homes, and the trains as needed. So been around for a while. We have a, over 230 people just on our technical team. And our focus recently has been on globalization, urbanization, sustainability, and making sure that our clients as well as our own projects are done as efficiently as possible. So we have a lot of different partners that we work with. Here's a sampling of a couple of the larger ones. Autodesk, of course, is one of the biggest. <clears throat> we also work with ESRI, Panzura, IBM, Eagle Point, a lot of different companies that we work with. So we're not just a specific partner to one person, we work with tools. And we always help our clients trying to find the correct tool for the correct problem. So we work with them during design, construction, all the way through operations from soup to nuts on any project, whether it's more AECO from an architecture building or civil or infrastructure. And we have a lot of different services that can help on just any, about any part of it, whether it's scripting or application development. We're going to be touching on one of the fruits of our labors for that in a minute, as well as for things that are more for visualization, project coordination assistance, uh, projects, uh, <coughs> Uh, staffing as well. I'm giving the presentation today is going to be myself, Peter Marchese. I'm the Senior Technology Evangelist at Microdesk, which means I get to uh, play around with all the new tools and make sure they're actually useful as opposed to just new. Uh, a lot of that means I'm focusing on our cloud technologies and I am administrating a lot of our BIM 360 services, both for ourselves and a few of our clients too. So that's one of the main reasons I'm going to be conducting this today. Now, what we're going to be going over is sort of the current situation and a couple of different solutions for remote collaboration. So as far as that, we're going to be talking about what is Autodesk doing to help out everybody to make this work a little bit easier. And we're also going to talk about what Microdesk is doing to help our clients through this as well. And then we'll have Q&A. Now, if you do have questions, please feel free to drop them into the questions window. I'm going to be keeping an eye on that throughout the presentation. If I'm able to answer a question during the process of me going through something, I will. If it's something that is best saved for a little bit later or at the end, I'll make sure I cover it at that point. Now, before we actually get into the uh, the midst of it, just a couple of quick questions for everybody who's watching. Just curious what the role is for the people that we're presenting to today. Are you a designer? Are you more of the BIM manager looking for some help getting your team online? Are you the principal of the firm trying to find out what some options are? Things like that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody, for your answers on that. The next one, is anybody here already using BIM 360? <clears throat> awesome. Good mix. A lot of people that haven't used it before. That's perfect. This will definitely help explain what you can actually get out of some of the new trials that you might have already heard about. And then lastly, is anybody here using cloud or mobile tools? Not necessarily just BIM 360, but any cloud or mobile tools on your projects. Awesome, good to see a lot of people are already at least starting that. BIM 360 might just be a new option or an addition or just something to help bridge the gap right now while everyone is actually working remotely. So again, thank you very much, everybody, for your time on that. I appreciate it. All right, let's get rolling. So current situation that probably most, if not all of us, are finding ourselves in is that we're working from home. For people who are not used to this, it can be very difficult, both from just, you know, change of scenery <laughs> throughout the entire day or just from actually being able to do the work from home. 
some of us might have really powerful computers at the office and then home, it's good for email. Uh, some people might not have network connections or other issues. And a lot of different companies are going through different processes to try to help their communities. Uh, Atlassian is making different products available for free for different for some teams. Uh, the Box, so Box.net, the cloud service, they're making one of their business editions free for 90 days in response to things. Uh, same thing for 8x8, it's a cloud communications provider, and Zoom, they've both made changes to their packages. So a lot of companies are responding to this with ways that can help out the communities to help make sure that people can work without enhancing the burden of financial strain that they're already under. Now, Autodesk is also helping out with this. So they're doing a lot of things through their foundation. They've already donated over $600,000 to different nonprofits to, for populations to help out with this. They're, including, they're increasing their donation matching gift if, for their employees. So if their employees are donating, Autodesk itself matches that two to one and raises the cap. Now, outside of their general uh, things that they're trying to do to help their communities, they're also making sure that what they're doing for their users is very clear. <clears throat> If you go to the Autodesk website, one of the things that you're going to see at the very top is this banner. So that banner takes you to one of their pages that covers a good article by Anthony Agnos that explains what they're doing, how they're trying to help, and also covers a little bit about what they're referring to as their extended access. Now, most likely that's what brought everybody here today is to find out what that is. Now, the extended access program from Autodesk is going to be covering a lot of things for free access for a longer period than you know expected or previous. So for AutoCAD Mobile and AutoCAD Web, you're not going to have access to the full version of that until the end of May. Now, additionally from the AutoCAD one, you're not going to have this for BIM 360 Docs and for BIM 360 Design. So now, the one thing to keep in mind here for BIM 360 Design is that this is only accessing the cloud collaboration for Revit. So at, at the moment, at the very least, this does not benefit uh, Civil 3D users. The purchased version does, but the extended trial only works for Revit for BIM 360 Design. Now for our manufacturing teams, they're expanding a trial for Fusion 360 and Fusion Team. And for our media and entertainment partners, they're expanding the trial for Shotgun. Now, one of the things to take away from this is that all of these products now are fully free. Some things have changed in terms of the setup, and I'm going to touch on that in a bit. But these are now free until the end of May. That time frame might actually get extended. It's really just going to be depending on what the current situation is. But even if you use tools that may not be specifically working on these, those tools can tie into other aspects. So as an example, if we have a client that their current situation is they use Vault. Vault is how they transfer files amongst everybody. But as you can see in the graphic, Vault is typically inside the firewall. When you have everybody working from home, now you have everybody VPNing in or remote desktoping and that could slow things down. The BIM 360 design or the BIM 360 docs trial, that can connect to your Vault setup. So if you're looking for ways just to extend access to certain files, this is one of the ways that we can actually do that. So we're not trying to change everything over, we're just trying to make things easier to get through this period. Again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to drop that into the questions window. Now, the use cases that we typically see for something like this for trial is getting started for the first time. So if what I wanna actually do is try something out. I want to see if I like this. I've never used it before. Perfect, you fill out the form and you're good. Usually what that means though is that if you've already got it, so if I tried it a while ago or if I'm paying for it right now and I just need more, the trial won't help you. The difference now is that Autodesk has made some changes on their back end, which means that if you've actually done this before and what you need to do is rapidly expand your team size, this will work. So if you have already using BIM 360 design, for example, you've got 20 people working on a project and everything's been great, and now suddenly you have 50 more people that need to get on it. This could work for you via the trial, where in the past it would not have. I got one quick question from before. Does BIM 360 need Vault? No, not at all. 
It's just one of the things that you can do with it. So if you have Vault, you can tr use BIM 360 as a window outside of your Vault setup. So if you're trying to share files out or pull files in, you could use BIM 360 to do so. But if you're using BIM 360 on its own, you don't need Vault at all. Cool. Now, to get started, and I'm going to be focusing on the getting started and a lot of the information going forward on the BIM 360 portion of the trial. If you have questions on the other ones, please feel free to drop those in. But from the presentation standpoint, I'm going to be focusing on BIM 360. Now, to get started, just like normal, you would go and look to fill out the trial page for BIM 360. So in this case, I would go to BIM360.autodesk.com, go for the trial. And I'll get these posted inside the uh, the chat window in a little bit. That allows me to fill out this form. Now, if what's happened is I'm doing this for the first time and I've never actually done this before, what you might have to do is create an account. That account is essentially your username. If you already have an account, perfect. You would sign in as part of this. Once you finish the account, that's going to tell you that you you're, uh, it's been created. You will get an email that you'll need to click on the link in that email. Once you've done that, it'll tell you that your account has now been verified. And that clicking on the link in an email from Autodesk is something that's important. It's going to be important for a bunch of the things that we talk about, though. So first thing, go fill out the trial form. If I don't already have an account, I create it. If I did already have an account, I'll sign in, and that'll be good. I'll see that I've filled out the form, I've gotten everything set up, and I'll get a notification that an activation email is on its way. If you've done this and you don't see an email, what you wanna end up doing is checking your spam filters. You're typically gonna get an email from no reply at Autodesk or bim360ent.no-reply at autodesk.com. Again, I'll get that inside the chat window in a bit. But you wanna check those if you don't have this. Now, once you've got that, I'll see my email. That welcome uh, email will have a link inside of it. I have to check that link and that will activate my account. Now, this is where things are a little bit different. In the past, if I was doing this trial, what would happen is this would set up a hub for me. And with that hub, I can invite people to the hub. But I would not be able to have people that are in my hub working on projects that were outside of that. So BIM 360 design allows people to use their license on multiple hubs, but the trial sort of contained that to the trial hub. That's where things are now changed. So if I was a client that I was starting this up for the first time, perfect, I would set this up, I'd go through the whole process, I would create my hub, and then I would start making my projects and inviting people there, and I'd be off and running. If I've already owned this though, and I need to get new people set up, all of my new people that do previously don't have a license, I would have them sign up for this trial individually. What's happening now is it's this trial format is giving the trial to the end users. So once I've finished this process, I'm actually gonna go to my account management site. And what I wanna see under trials is my BIM 360 design license. So it's thankfully gonna say longer than 30 days due to the, uh, the current, the uh, platform program. But this is where I can actually go now and double check, did everything go through? Am I set for this? And that's the one of the big changes that's now enabling people to actually use this uh, extension to work on projects that already exist, to grow their pool of users, so that way they don't have to take that hit just to have people work from home. Now, one of the things that Microdesk is doing to help with this, and once I finish this part, I'm actually gonna go into the service and show people who aren't familiar with this how to create that project, and then how this tool that I'm about to show works. Now, in terms of Microdesk, what we're doing to help our clients, we're doing a lot like what we've always done. We are helping them with the support. We're now doing training much more frequently online, and we're trying to help our clients through all of the confusion and the issues that are currently happening, because we've been doing it, we have experience with that, and we wanna make sure that everybody is working comfortably and is <laughs> not scrambling with this. So we've been well positioned for that. Now, the other thing is we have a dev team on staff. 
And one of the problems that is kind of coming out of this is what happens when I have a pr one project to put online? Not that big of a deal. What happens when I have 100 projects that now need to jump online? That can be a problem. So what we've actually done is we've created a tool called the bulk loader. So this works with BIM 360. This can automate the process of creating projects, and then it can automate the process of uploading our project content. So again, we have clients that are setting things up online. That's not a problem. It, it's not that hard. It doesn't take that long to move a, a project online. But when you have a large amount of them, this can really streamline that. Essentially what happens is you start off with your template that you have. And again, I'll show this in more depth in a minute. Tell it which ones I want to actually load to the cloud. It creates those projects. And then what it does is it'll upload the content from my local network, whether it's on my laptop or it's going to be on my network where my server is. And then it pushes that to the cloud. And then I can browse my projects afterwards and review it and make sure that everything went across correctly. That's a good question here. Question is, does this mean that each employee needs to sign up for the trial for BIM 360 for all employees to access projects in the cloud? Or is this just one admin license that allows all employees to access files in BIM 360 without having to sign up for the trial? Good question, Jay. In the past, what would happen is that one admin, if you, if you did not already have BIM 360, that one admin would create the hub and then could invite whoever you wanted there or he or she wanted there. Now with the changes that Autodesk made to allow this to work this way, every end user that needs access to BIM 360 design would actually create their own trial. So that way they all have that entitlement. That little graphic that I showed where I go to my account management site and it shows me the uh, that I have the trial, I want that in my account management. Now to set things up, once you've got your hub up, if you've never done this before, what you're going to do is you're going to say add, and you would go through the process of adding a project. When I'm doing it through this window, all I have to do is pick a name and pick a project type. Once that's complete, I can then save this and move forward. Once I've saved it, essentially what I'll be looking at is my services view, and I can choose which services I want. If you've done the trial for BIM 360 design, I'll have document management and I'll have design collaboration. I'll activate those services and tell it who I want to be the admin for that service. So I'm going through, I'm turning on the project, I'm telling it what it's called, what kind of project it is. I'm saying who's gonna administer my documents and the design collaboration. So if I go through this process, Save that. That's now active. And what I want to do is go to my design collaboration in the project administration and set up my teams. Now, teams here are really more as how I'm going to organize my project. So if I'm going to be working on this just with my own company, I just want my own crew working on this, I can add one team and call it the name of the, my company or name of the discipline or whichever. If I'm using this to coordinate with other people, I typically would make one team per, per company. So this is, think of this as your sandbox. This is how everybody gets to work on their files, but still have their own space. And then once I've gone through the creation of the teams, I would then go into my document management, create any additional folder structure, and in many ways, the most important part, assign my permissions. Who can do what? What rights do they have? Can they modify files? Can they upload files? Can they tweak that? So I would go through all of this process. And then once I'm dialed in with that, go back to my project admin, and I'll start inviting my members. So get all the people that I need access to this into my project. That's sort of the cliff notes for this, but it's not that complex, it's not that hard, and thankfully it doesn't take that much, that much time. And once that's all set up, from the Revit side of things, all I have to do is come over here, say I wanna collaborate, 
it'll tell me I need to save the model. So I'll save it. And then as long as I've logged in and I've taken care of my trial already, so I have my entitlement, I can choose where I want to save it. So that'll be BIM 360 Document Management. I'll choose the hub that I want to put this on, the project that I want to put it in, and then the folder structure that I've got. So typically I'll put it in the correct team and tell it to initiate. And once that's done, my model will then go to the cloud and then the rest of my team can start working online. So in all honesty, it only takes a couple of minutes to really run through this relatively quickly and get people up and running. Now the part that can take a lot of time is if you have a lot of projects and you have a lot of data that you then need to push to the cloud. That's essentially where the desktop, uh, can, sorry, the bulk uploader comes in. So what the bulk uploader is, is it's a tool that we've created. This will connect to your hub. So you'll log in and set everything up. There's a wizard that ensures that you are the right person that has the administration of uh, admin access for this. And it's going to be working off of an Excel spreadsheet. So this spreadsheet is customized. It has full instructions. The things are color coded to make it a lot easier to understand what is required and what is not. So this has more requirements through the Excel spreadsheet because of the uh, API requirements from Autodesk than if I filled it out manually. But with this, I put in all this data and a lot of this is really simple. If I don't care about what the value or currency is, I just drag that down. So I don't have to put it all in there and have real data. I just have to have something in that field. So all the green ones I have to fill out. I put in the folder path for the files that I want to actually then upload. Once I fill this out, I'll close my spreadsheet. So that way the service can actually use it. Go to add projects. And then I load that template. And what it's going to do is it's going to show me all that data from before. And then I'll check the boxes for the ones that I want to add. Hit the plus symbol. And then this starts going through the process of creating those projects. So while that's actually thinking, I can come back over here and just hop into my account admin. And there's those projects I just click on the button to show. So those were just created right now, all from that spreadsheet. This little pop-up that comes out of that tool though, this reminds you that before you can start working in that project, you just have to click on the activation email from Autodesk. So that created the project. Now what I want to do is I want to add the files that I mentioned, that folder structure I had. So I check this. These are the files that I want to bring up there. That'll show my local folders, and that'll push that up there. There we go. If I do BIM 360, that allows me to see what's going on online just to confirm everything's there. And then it just starts processing and uploading all of this data. So I could have a terabytes of data on my local network that I need to move to the internet. I fill out that template, set up the data, set it and forget it, and then I can go back and do the rest of my work. Now, the bulk loader is going to be free for the same duration as the Autodesk extended trial. All the tools that I mentioned before, rather than having, in some cases, a one-week trial or a 30-day trial, everything is currently free up until May 31st at the moment. And we'll see what happens when we get closer to that date. Yep. Now, for next steps for most people, you have the Autodesk Resource Center. Anything from Autodesk has to do with the, uh, the current COVID-19 issues, they're going to be posting that there. The BIM 360 trial, that's the page you want to go to for that. And if you're looking to use the bulk uploader that I just went over, that's going to be there.
Uh, we, we can't necessarily help everybody find, you know, the toilet paper or, you know, hand sanitizer, but we're definitely there to help our clients with just about anything else. Yep. So I see I got a bunch of questions in here, so I'm going to start running through those. Uh, does the bulk loader include required information for projects needed in BIM 360? Project name, project type, etc. Yes. So when you're filling out that form, it will need you to fill it out in there. And in fact, because of the API requirements, we have to put a little bit more data in the uh, the bulk loader than we would than if we had filled it out in the browser. Uh, question. Do we need to get every employee set up with a license for Revit on their home computer? Yes. So depending on the kind of license that you have already. So if you have a network license, you can have your users either remote desktop in or VPN in and borrow a license. You can set people up and request a home use license from Autodesk. If you've already swapped over from the perpetuals into a named user, then they, that user already has that license. They just have to log into Revit and their named user account will pull that. So they'll be fine with that. Uh, question here, we've been using a remote desktop program. What are the advantages of BIM 360 over that? So the remote desktop, what that actually does is it's gonna be transmitting the uh, image from your screen and the mouse movements back and forth. So they're technically working in their office. So BIM 360 means that they're working local. So as long as their computer at home is similar to the one in the office, their actual work could be smoother and faster because they're not getting that input lag of typing or moving the mouse. The problem that a lot of people have versus the remote desktop is that if not a lot of content is available, meaning that I'm working from home, but I still have the VPN in because all of my files are on the network, then it's kind of a one or the other. But if, uh, if you're already using Office 365, if you have data that they need that is accessible from anywhere, then BIM 360 is typically going to be faster. Uh, uh, question, is there a way to bypass the credit card requirement when signing up for the trial period? Uh, yes. So one of the things that Autodesk has, is mentioning on a lot of the papers is that this is not they're not doing this as a method to try to convert everyone into a paid user. They're really doing this as a method of trying to help everybody so that way people can get online, they can get their work done, and you know it's one less thing to worry about. So you shouldn't expect a lot of you know uh, sales or marketing or like pitch emails from this. So you shouldn't need to put in your credit card. You just have to go to that page, fill out the form, and you can start your trial. Uh, question here, how does BIM 360 sync cloud files back to local files? So um, I could take this a couple of different ways, so I'll explain it in a, in a few. One way might mean that what you're talking about is I've got my files on my local network, and what I'm doing is maybe I use the bulk uploader or a drag and drop or whatever to get these into BIM 360. Now, once they're in BIM 360 though, what I can actually do is if I have the desktop connector, this is essentially what I use to access files from BIM 360. All the content that's now online, I can access as if it's a networked drive. This is one of those things that ensures everybody who is working on the project is using the same file path. So links, references, all of that would still work. So this is one of the projects that I just uploaded, or actually a different one I uploaded. And this file currently says not cached because it lives in the cloud. But once I go to open it, what would happen is it's going to download that to a local cache. So it's on my machine. Now, if that question was referring to actual Revit, where you've got your central model in the cloud and you have your local on your machine, same idea. So you still actually do have a local file that you're working in. And every time I open that, all I'm really doing is I'm pulling down the changes from the cloud. So if I have a 400 meg Revit file, every time I save or open, it's only pushing or pulling the few megabytes worth of changes from the last time. It's not doing the entire file. Yep, uh, another question here, good one. Uh, if you're using 2017 because of clients using older versions, 
that works off of an older service called BIM 360 Teams, not BIM 360 Document Management. Unfortunately, the BIM 360 Design Trial only works with 2018.3 and newer. It doesn't work with the classic services. Purchases do, but unfortunately, the extended trial doesn't work for the older one. A lot of good questions so far. Uh, anything else that we haven't touched on yet that somebody might be curious about? Now, another question with regards to the desktop connector. Does it have the ability to download all the files? Not at the moment, no. What we can do is we can create essentially a report of all the files and all the versions and when the last time they were uploaded to the cloud. Uh, it's not too hard to download the files manually, but that is something that is on our uh, feature list to add. Awesome. Uh, good question. Where should linked DWG files be stored? The the best case would be put them on the desk on BIM 360 for the desktop connector. The reason for that is that way everybody on the project will be looking at the exact same location and the links will be consistent for everybody. Uh, another question: What is the best way to upload a single project that may not need to be done with the bulk uploader? Usually, it's going to be one of two ways: using the desktop connector. I can drag and drop content into this location. The other thing I can end up doing is from the browser, going into my document management and using upload files or dragging and dropping into here. So both ways will actually work. The one thing to keep in mind, and this actually is perfect, it ties into the next question. You're not gonna drag and drop or just use the upload files for your central model. That central model that lives in the cloud you actually push that to the cloud using that uh, collaborate button inside of Revit. So I basically open up Revit, open up my model, and tell it I want to collaborate in the cloud, and it'll move my central into the cloud. Now, the question there, what's the difference between a published model versus a synced working model? Anybody who's inside of Revit, we're always going to see the latest model that people are working on. You know, I sync to central, you reload latest, you see my work immediately publishing that model. So if I actually go to my dashboard here and look at one of my projects, one of the things I'm actually going to be able to see here is if something is pro uh, published or not. These are all latest published. What that means is that the version that I'm seeing in Revit is also the version that I'm seeing in the browser. So if I come up here and I'm looking for my Revit model, and let me actually hop into one of the other ones I have. I'll go in here. When I look at my Revit model in the cloud, I'm actually not looking at my working model. I'm looking at the published version of that working model. So this says version two, but maybe I've saved that Revit model 100 times, but I've only published it twice. So two separate things. There's a little bit of a disconnect there, but that, think of that more as a plot or a print set when you're publishing it. That allows the people using the mobile device or the browser to actually see it. Uh, another question, does the network central model have to be detached before sending it to the cloud? Uh, it doesn't have to be, but that's typically the workflow that most people take. So I would open it up detached, make sure if there's anything I have to clean up, and then I'm going to tell it that I want to collaborate in the cloud. Awesome. Uh, question, do you, you lose your annotations when uploading a project to the cloud? No, you don't. So you're still uploading the same file, so nothing's going to get broken. And because I'm, like, me at my workstation, I still have connections to all of my links. So that'll actually be fine. Once all my files are actually connected to the network, then what, or sorry, to uh, BIM360, what I'll want to do is go in and actually modify my managed links, so that way everything is pointing in the right spot. So I would make sure all my Revit files or CAD files, as was asked earlier, are now pointing to the BIM 360 file location, as opposed to my previous network location. 
and that makes sure that everybody who opens it from BIM 360 is looking at the same file from the same place, and we're all on the same page, and it's not going to have any problems where I can't find a file because I'm not connected to the network or I don't see the same folder structure. Awesome. A lot of great questions, everybody. Thank you so much. Remember, we're here for you. If you have questions on things, if you're looking for tools that are lower cost or can help you solve some problems as you're working from home, please feel free to reach out. We're there for you. We want to make sure that you're all as successful as we are during this time. We want to make sure that everybody is still in a good position when this finally does clear up and we're able to keep rolling. So thank you very much for your time, everybody. Have a great rest of the day, rest of the week. And if there is something we can do to help, just let us know. Stay healthy, everybody.